What's up internet, Infinitely Galactic here with another Linux distro review and today we're looking at Mac part 528. Now of course, MacPup is a puppy distribution that was recommended on the on the video that I posted last week and the week before uh, that seemed to be the one that was recommended the most. So MacPup is uh, based on Lucid Puppy, uh, which means that it is binary package compatible with Lucid Links, Ubuntu, and you do get the E17 Enlightenment window manager there as well. So it's an incredibly lightweight distribution. The download itself is only 164 megs, so it's not going to take much time to download it at all. And really, it's an amazingly full-featured for such a small distribution. Of course, that's the whole nature of Puppy, and that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So let's get down to it. All right, so here we are with MacPup 528, and as you can see, this is a distribution that takes artwork very seriously. The maintainer of this distribution does a fantastic job in compiling some lovely themes and some wallpapers uh, for this distribution, which is really what Enlightenment is all about. Now, Enlightenment is just the window manager here, which is what we're dealing with. So you left click anywhere on the screen to get your menu, and as you can see, you've got uh, pretty much everything you'd want to run just through these menus here. So we just run through them quickly. We've got a fair bit of stuff under business here, including numeric and home bank. Uh, then under the desktop stuff, we've got all of these settings, the JWM configuration and all that fun stuff as well. You've also got some settings there for the uh, simple open box theme maker. So obviously with the lightweight applications, if it does, uh, if it does use open box for some of the uh, windows, then you, can, uh, then you can either create or customize your GTK themes there. Under documents, we've got Abbey Word here, which is fun for all of your word processing needs. And you can see here that it looks pretty decent and it does the job. Under file system, we have the rocks file manager, which is usually the default file manager for most puppy distributions. Single click to poke around, and you can see we've got some uh, we've got some text files and all of that fun stuff here. It's got a list of all the contributors, and you can see here as well the theme uh, coincides very nicely with the wallpapers, which I'm going to talk about a in a little bit. Moving right along, we've got some a few puzzle games here, and we've got some uh, graphics. Graphics programs here, including the View Noir Image Viewer, which is the same one that you're going to find on most lightweight distributions. We've also got a, a lightweight version of Inkscape, which is, uh, of course, the vector graphics editor. This is just a trimmed down version, so it isn't too heavy on the resources, and it also isn't too heavy on the distribution's ISO, which, uh, like I mentioned, is very, very small. We have the camera manager there for when you plug in your camera. We've got the MT Paint, which is like a very light version of GIMP uh, in, in, its, in its functionality, at least. And then we've got the image scanning there with Xane, and then we've also got the color choosers. And then under internet, we have all of the standard stuff that you would want uh, with an internet uh, under internet applications, including Silfeed for your email, Transmission BitTorrent client, XChat for IRC, we've got Firefox 7 Beta for the web browser of choice. Now, I would, I would, I would like to see uh, a bit more of a lighter web browser installed by default. I uh, can see that they are wanting to stick with something a little bit more mainstream that complies with web standards. Uh, now, one other note that I do want to make about Enlightenment, which I do appreciate, is when you open up a window and a dialog box appears, your mouse will automatically redirect to whatever the open window is. So if the, if the window is, is handled by the native Enlightenment window manager, then your mouse will automatically jump to the open window that is on top of all the other layers, which I find this very convenient and it's probably something that might be annoying for some users, but still it's a nice little touch that, uh, that makes usability that much easier. Then we've got a few other puppy tools here, including PMirror Get for all of your mirror management. Then you've got your FTP client, you've got Axel Download Accelerator, which is a very nice uh, which is a very nice tool that helps you download files uh, multi-threaded, so you download them a lot quicker. Then you've got all your SSH stuff there, which not uh, which not that many people would use. Then under multimedia, you've got your Asunder for CD ripping. You've got Bacon Recorder. You've got CD player and ripping FFmpeg. You've got Gnome End Player for all of your media files. GUVC View for the webcam viewer and a few other random tools there for the uh, CD and DVD burning. Then we've got all the network tools, including the firewall. And under personal, you've got a few uh, personal information managers here, including Osmo, which is one of my favorites, which is uh, for, uh, for scheduling in tasks, contacts, notes, and all that fun stuff. As you can see, the open box theme does look a little bit ordinary, uh, and it does look a little bit Redmond on the side there as well. But again, it's all customizable, and you can change it to your heart's content, which is where I'm going to be spending some of my time now. 
With Enlightenment, it is all, uh, it is mostly widget based. As you can see here, we've got a nice little clock running up here in the top. So you go to settings and you can see gadgets and that's what the, that's what the widgets are known as. So you can pull up any kind of gadget you would like here, including the iBar. Now the iBar is, is like a dock in that you can do pretty much anything you want with it. Uh, you can customize the sort of icons that you want displaying here and you can also add certain things to it. And you can see down here in the bottom, this is essentially an iBar with a desktop window manager at the bottom. And then we've got a menu button here and then all of your shortcuts to all of your favorite applications and tasks along the bottom. Then you can also change the enlightenment theme here, which we've got a few different themes here that you can apply. Uh, and again, all of these themes are, there are many more themes available on the net, uh, which you can download. And so despite MacPup's uh, meager system resource requirements, uh, you definitely are not skimping on looks here at all. So now I just want to take a look at some of the unique tools that are uh, that uh, that make Puppy famous, especially when it comes to configuration. Because with uh, with Puppy, because of the fact you are running on such a small base, you don't have a lot of hardware configuration there out of the box. However, they do counter that quite nicely with a lot of these setup wizards that Puppy provide. So of course, this is you're going to find this across the board on Puppy, and there's no exception here in MacPup. Uh, and so you've got different wizards here for. Uh, for all of the all the wizards combined, you've got a few options here just by selecting setup wizards, but then you've also got your ALSA for sound cards, CD DVD drive, cups for printing, internet connection wizards, Linux firewall, uh, mouse keyboard, multiple sound cards, and of course Xorg video wizard for your uh, graphics cards and things of that nature. And then down the bottom we also have the we also have the installation tools which are there to help you install Puppy on whatever medium you would choose. Uh, now again, check out Sneaky Linux's channel because he has some fantastic tutorials about how to install this onto a hard drive, USB drive, etc, etc. And now I want to move straight on to the pa Puppy package management. Uh, now, when it comes to package management with, uh, with Puppy Linux, you've got a few different options. You've got the Quick Pets, which is probably the easiest way to get your hands on the most popular uh, applications. So you can see here that by loading the Quick Pet installer, you've got a few different links to uh, the, 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 the applications that you are probably going to use the most. So GIMP, Audacity, Songbird, Wine, Google Earth, and you've got them all categorized here into Internet, Useful Pets, uh, SFS, which is uh, pretty much just an executable there where it's all wrapped up into one binary uh, for, a lot of the, uh, for a lot of the more famous applications here, including VLC, VirtualBox, Samba, LibreOffice, KOffice, Java, and all that fun stuff. You've also got quick links to the drivers here for both NVIDIA and ATI graphics cards, and then you can also test your graphics card as to, what, uh, as to which card you are running and which driver would suit that card the best. Now, for actual hardcore package management, and by hardcore I mean the same as every, but every other package management really, you have the Puppy Package Manager, which is all uh, categorized nicely here on the left-hand side, and it does have, of course, quite a decent-sized repository. As you can see here, that we have got selected the Puppy Lucid uh, rep repository here, which is mostly based on the software coming out of the Ubuntu Lucid Links repository. You've got some filters down here on the side, and then you've also got the f uh, search functionality there as well. You can configure the package manager to pull from different repositories, including all of the different Puppy repositories that have been added over the years. And then, of course, you can throw in the actual, uh, the main Ubuntu repositories as well, which is very handy if you want to have all of the applications that Ubuntu supports. So MacPup is a very decent distribution for older hardware indeed. The E17 window manager is definitely gorgeous, considering the, uh, the resources that it does not use. Uh, it isn't using Compiz or any third-party window managers that desktop the desktop environment and the window manager are tied into the one thing which keeps it so lightweight you can see here on HTOP on the pro system processors I am using a total of 46 megabytes of RAM uh, out of the gig that I've given it and I'm using about uh, between 4 and 10 percent of, uh, of my CPU, which is only one core of the of the eight cores that I have. So thank you everybody for recommending MacPup. Uh, it definitely is a puppy distribution worth checking out. And at the same time, if you would like to check out uh, E17, but aren't entirely sure about the puppy base, uh, then you probably want to check out Bodhi Linux, which uh, which I have done a review on, and I'll throw links in uh, in the description as well. And I might as well throw a link up here while I'm waiting. Uh, now, at the same time, if you would like to give uh, Puppy Linux a try, then definitely give it a go on a USB flash drive, in that because it is so small, 
It's very easy to put on a USB flash drive, have plenty of storage left over for your personal stuff, and take it with you wherever you go. So it doesn't matter what computer you're on, whether you're at a library, an internet cafe, etc., etc., you can simply boot up this baby and it will get you exactly what you need with minimal fussing about. So definitely check out MacPup528 if you have meager hardware lying around, and I shall put links to all the relevant things down below, including uh, my Google Plus and my Twitter where you can follow me on what I'm doing, and also you can respond to the question of the day either in the comments or Google Plus or Twitter or whatever, which is uh, with these lightweight distributions like MacPup or Bodhi Linux or any of those with the Enlightenment Window Manager or really any lightweight distribution. Basically, have you seen Linux running anywhere else other than laptops and desktops? Send me links, uh, send me links either, well, preferably on Google Plus because I'll actually be able to follow through on them, but definitely drop me lines in the comments below if you have seen something and then I can go and Google it later. Thank you everybody for your support and I shall catch you sometime in the future with another app review and also look forward to the next uh, Linux A team which will be sometime in the next couple of weeks where hopefully I'll be able to attend. Peace out everybody.